The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Would you know what to say if your telephone should ring like this? Yes? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on now? Why, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? It's This Is Your FBI, just starting. Do you know who sponsors that program? Why, sure I do. It's my good friends, the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Uh, Just last Wednesday, my Equitable representative told me about a special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. Believe me, that's one great life insurance plan. So naturally, I know that This Is Your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. And in just 15 minutes, I'll give full information about the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight's FBI file, The Wayward Brothers. It is the business of your FBI to investigate crime. And in the carrying out of that business, it is necessary that they know as much as possible about the habits of the criminal. Because crime prevention is also a part of the work done by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A recent study undertaken by your FBI revealed a fact which will seem odd to those of you who are law-abiding citizens. There are seasons in crime. Seasons just as there are in every other business. During the winter months, the criminal concentrates on crimes against property. Crimes like auto theft, armed robbery, and arson. But in the spring and summer months, in this season of the year, the criminal's fancy turns to people. And the fashion is to commit crimes against the person. Crimes like extortion, kidnapping, and murder. Tonight's FBI file opens in a small private plane that's flying over the desert wasteland of one of our southwestern states. A young man is seated at the controls of the plane. He speaks to a girl who sits beside him. Sue? Yes, honey? See that mesa down there on the left? Yes. That's our landmark. Oh. Twenty minutes more and we're at the ranch. I'm kind of sorry to hear that. I've really enjoyed this flight so much. Well... I hope you'll enjoy the ranch, too. Well, of course I will. Ned. Hmm? There's something I think I'd better tell you right now. Well? It's about your mother and dad. Ned, I... I'm scared to death about meeting them. (laughs) Are you kidding? Why, they're the sweetest guys you'll ever... I know all that. But, well, you're their only son... We're engaged. And they'll love it. I hope so. Oh, Susie, baby, will you please? Hey. Trouble, honey? I don't know. Yeah. We got trouble. What do we do? Oh, just stay where you are, honey. Keep calm. I will. I don't think this motor's coming back. We're now at about 800 feet. I'm going to try to set it down easy. Well, you've got plenty of landing fields. Miles and miles of desert. Yeah, it isn't as flat as it looks from here. Well, if we're lucky, we'll hit a good spot. I see. Tighten your safety belt, Sue. Sure. I'm afraid we're losing altitude too fast. I'm going to try to set it down right. If I could just level her off a little more. Ned, we're going to crash. Easy, baby. Ned! Ned! <laughs> Slim. Whoa, boy. There. There's our plane. 
I told you I'd seen it, Paul. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. It plowed into the sand pretty deep. Yeah. Do you think there's people in it, Chuck? I don't know. Well, let's have a look. Oh, it stayed in one piece anyway. Yeah. Uh, this looks like a door right here. I'll, I'll try it. Anybody in there? Yeah. Yeah, there's two of them. A man and a female. Alive? Well, I'll see. The man's breathing. That shows the female. Anything else in there? I'm just looking around. Wait. Here, here's some bags. I'll pass them on out to you. Okay. Here you are. Here's one of them. Right. And, uh, here. Here's the other. Oh, I got it. What about the people? What about them? Don't you want to search them before we go through the bags? Nope. Why not? Well, I'm lifting the people out, too. What for? So as we can tend to them. What's got into you? Nothing. Why don't we take what we can here and just leave them be? Take a look at them bags, Slim. They cost plenty. So does a private airplane. So what? Well, these folks must be worth money. We'll get lots more out of being nice to them. I don't go along with that. Nobody's asking you to, Slim. That's just how we're doing it. Now, give me a hand. Some 50 miles away from the scene of the plane crash in an FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is about to leave on an assignment. Say, Jim. Oh, yes, Pat. Where are you going? Following up a report that just came in from the Indian agent down in Tevis. What about? Well, there was a murder committed on the reservation last night. A man's body was found early this morning. What's the story? Well, the victim was an archaeologist. His name was Adams. He came in from the east about three weeks ago. He planned to spend the summer on the reservation. I see. Did he work alone? Yes. How was he killed? Stabbing... Was he in a fight? I don't know, Pat. There hasn't been much evidence collected to date. When was he last seen? Yesterday afternoon. He was believed to have been in the company of two other men. Any idea who they were? Oh, not yet. But I think we have the motive, all right. What is it? Robbery. I understand that it was generally known that this man Adams carried quite a bit of cash. Oh. And when his body was found, his effects were pretty well ransacked. But ironically enough, the thieves never did find his money. How was that? Well, he wore a belt around his waist, and his assailant didn't search him that closely. Well, Jim, these two men that Adams was riding with sounds like pretty good suspects. Pat, I can give you a better answer to that after I've been down there. Take it easy, mister. Huh? Just lie still. Where? Where am I? In a cabin. My leg. I think it's busted. How did... Wait. Where's Sue? Well, where is she? The uh, gal who was in the plane with you? Yes. She's right in the next room. How is she? Still passed out. What's wrong? I is she injured? What is it? I don't know. Uh, help me up. I'll, I'll go in. <laughs> I told you that leg was busted. Who's with Sue? Is anyone taking care of her? No. Nope. Why not? Look, we took you both from the airplane. Wasn't that enough? Oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. I I'm very grateful, too. No. Okay. Is this your cabin? No, but we're staying in it. Where's my plane? About uh, ten miles from here. How far from a town are we? About thirty miles. Who else is here besides yourself? My brother, Chuck. Have you a car? No. Horses. Uh, could one of you go into town at once? What for? A doctor. The young lady who is with me must need one. It looks as though I do, too. 
Well, I'll see what my brother says. Where is he? Outside. Oh, oh, please, call him in here. I'll talk to him first. Tell him I'll pay him well for his trouble. I'll tell him. I'll be back. Is that you, Slim? Yeah. Well, how are they? The fellas come, too. Oh? He asked me to come out and talk to you. What for? He wants that one of us should go into town for a doctor. Did you tell him how far it was? Yeah. He said he'd pay you well for your trouble. How much? I didn't ask. You been going through the bag? Uh, yeah. Find anything? Well, no dough, but I've been reading these letters. This fellow's family's real rich. Where are they located? On a ranch, 30-odd miles from here. You going to talk to him about getting a doctor? Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk. Don't forget, he said it pays. Slim, <laughs> he's going to pay. Plenty. Hello, sir. Hi, Jim. Pick up anything down Terrace? Yes, I was lucky enough to find the knife that the killer used. There were several good prints on the handle. Say, what about the two men on horseback? Oh, I just got a general description on them, Pat. Nothing really worthwhile. I'm going to get these prints off to the laboratory at once. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? I'm sending out a set of prints myself. No? What on? Well, a call came in right after you left this morning. A family named Robinson. Hmm. They have a ranch about 20 miles out of town. They reported that their son had left Denver yesterday in his own plane. His fiancée was with him. And the plane was to arrive at the ranch early last evening. After it was several hours overdue, searching parties were sent out. I see. Early this morning, the plane was spotted from the air. The pilot landed, examined young Robinson's plane, and found it empty. Well? He noticed, however, that there were bloodstains in the cabin and numerous prints of horses' hooves around the plane. He returned and reported this to the boy's family. But where did Robinson's plane land? On the uh, Indian reservation. That's oh. why the family called here. Did you go out and look it over? Yeah. You find anything? Just the fingerprints I mentioned before. Well, Pat, I wouldn't say that either one of us had an easy assignment, so let's go to work. Go on in, Slim. Okay. Hey, where is he? Huh? He was stretched right out there on that bunk. He's gone. Well, now, he didn't come out. We was right by the door. Yeah, but... The... Oh, he's probably in the next room with his girlfriend. But he couldn't walk. That leg of his. Yeah, he got in here all right. See? Yeah. Mister, this here is my brother. Hello. Hi. I thought you couldn't walk. I couldn't. I sort of dragged myself in here. I knew my fiancée would need me. She's still out? Yes. What about a doctor? Will you get one? Well, uh, that sort of depends, mister. On what? On uh, what it's worth to you. Well, that's unimportant. Name your price. Okay. Uh, $10,000. What? You heard me. What? That's sheer robbery. If that's how you feel, mister, you don't have to pay... We don't have to get no doctor. Look, now, look. You can see for yourself this girl is desperately in need of help. Mm -hmm. oh, please be reasonable. She's your girl, mister. Why don't you help her? Sure. Go get the doctor yourself. Oh, you know that's impossible. You know I can just barely move. Then it looks like you better pay. I haven't got it. You can get it easy enough. Just write a note to your family. I happen to know their ranch is nearby. Tell them to put up the money. Slim here can deliver the note. Oh, they wouldn't stand for anything like that. Then I guess the girl don't get no doctor. Look, you have horses here. I'll go into town myself. No, oh, you just stay put. No, let go of me. Let me get out. Oh, no. No. When he comes to Slim, he'll ride his family. <laughs> We'll reopen tonight.
tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now, a special message to people on the way up, to the man who will soon phone his wife to tell her good news like this. Listen, honey, I've just seen the Acme Company. They've offered me the job. And boy, what an increase in salary. Yes, that's one of the great moments of life. And when it happens to you, when you finally achieve the success you're working and planning for, make sure you have life insurance designed to order for you. Right now, investigate the Equitable Society's special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. A plan for people of all ages who expect to be earning more money three years from now than they are today. Does that mean that this equitable plan is flexible, considers both my present and my future? Exactly right. And that's just one of several advantages of this Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. First, it gives you and your family needed protection right now. Second, this Equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. Third, this equitable plan is flexible at all times. Can expand or contract as you see fit. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me. How can I get the whole story? The easiest way is to get in touch with your equitable society representative. Phone him as soon as possible. And ask him for full details on the equitable plan for people on the way up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Wayward Brothers. As you have seen aptly illustrated by tonight's case from the files of your FBI, there is no reasoning with the criminal mind, for there is neither logic nor compassion in the makeup of the criminal. The human being has no dignity as an individual to the criminal because he has chosen to live his life outside the conventions set up and obeyed by his fellow beings. That lack of regard for his fellow man is the basic reason for the lack of success of every criminal. For one thing is as true in crime as it is in every other field of life. And that is that unless we have a common and mutual loyalty, we are doomed. Because no one person is entirely self-sufficient. To rephrase that point which the criminal can never understand, we are indeed our brother's keeper. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk reading a laboratory report. Finishing it, he jumps excitedly to his feet and calls out. Pat! Oh, Pat! Yeah, Jim? Come on in here a minute, will you? Surely. What do you want? Take a look at this report that just came in from the laboratory. On the fingerprints you sent? On the prints we both sent them. They're identical, Pat. What? Yes, they both belong to the same man. Well, what do you know? Who is it? A man named Charles Elgin, also known as Chuck Elgin. What's his background? He was arrested about 12 years ago for a bank job. He's also been in trouble with local police in several states. I see. He's always worked with his brother. His name is John Elgin, also known as Slim. Then they could be the two men who were seen with Adams that afternoon before he was murdered. I would think so, yes. I've got a complete description here on both of them. They must have come across the disabled plane. Yes. And they undoubtedly took young Robinson and his girlfriend along with them. Right. Say, does that report have anything on where they can be found, where they live? No, but they're from these parts originally. The local police can probably help us on that. Yeah. Pat, I'll send out an alarm on these men. Good. While you're doing that, I'll run over and talk to the police. <laughs> Chuck? Oh, coming around. Hand me that dipper of water. Sure. His girlfriend was just moaning a little. I think she's coming around, too. Uh, leave her alone in there. I don't want him to see her again until he writes the note. Okay, give me that water. Oh. Here. Oh, please, please. Yeah, uh, that done it. I... Oh, I'm still here. Yeah, that's right. Where's Sue? We moved you out of her room. Is she still unconscious? Yeah. Look, won't you listen to reason? Please, go and get a doctor. I I told you before, we'd be glad to. You still want $10,000? Uh, 
That's right. Feel like writing that note now, mister? Look, I... Time's passing, you know. Okay. I'll write it. Well, that's better. You got a pencil, Slim? Yeah. No paper, though. Well, there's a bag over there. Go get it. Right. What will I say in the note? I'll tell you what to write. Well, here's the bag. Okay. Now, you can write it right there on the floor. Here. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> dear folks, some good people saved my life. I'm staying with them. Got that okay? Uh-huh. Uh, what's your girl's name? Sue. Then say, uh, me and Sue are okay. I want to pay these good people for helping me. Give the man who brings this note $10,000. You got all that? It's not ten thousand dollars. Uh-huh. Then say, uh, he will tell you, uh, let you know where we are. And don't tell the police about this. Then sign your name. But what about the doctor? When they pay the dough, you'll get one. But the whole purpose of writing this note is to get a doctor. No! Look! Just sign your name. Special Agent Taylor. Hello, Jim. This is Pat. Oh, yes, Pat. How did you make out? Well, I spent most of the afternoon here at police headquarters. I've been trying to get some line on the Elgin brothers. Any luck? Well, someone reported seeing them down near Tevis the day before yesterday. I see. And they do have horses. The police say they know the desert country like a book. Well, then they must be hiding out in that wasteland somewhere. We... Oh, excuse me, Pat. Yep. Hold on a second when your message just came in. Right. Hey. Hey, Pat, looks like we may be getting some action. What is it? This message is from Robinson's parents. They just received a phone call from a man who claimed he's got a note from their son. Really? Yes. He told them he'd be right out to see them. Pat, I'd better get right over to their ranch. <laughs> What happened, Tim? Well, I've had a busy two hours. Did you get out to Robinson's ranch in time? In time to wait. What do you mean? The man who called him never showed up. Oh, that's too bad. It was one of the Elgin brothers, all right. How do you know? Well, when the man didn't appear, I questioned the Robinsons about the phone conversation. They recalled that he said he was telephoning from a blacksmith shop. Yeah? Well, there was only one blacksmith in their village, so I went over there. Yeah, I see. The blacksmith told me that Elgin had left his horse there to be shod and said he'd be back in about an hour. When was all this? About two hours ago. Did Elgin return? Yes, he came back in five minutes. Blacksmith said he seemed highly nervous. Elgin urged him to finish the job quickly, and as soon as it was done, he rode away. Did the blacksmith learn where he was going? No, but he did say he had a 30-mile ride. Oh, that doesn't tell us much. Pat, it could if he hasn't had too much of a start. We've got an idea. Now, this is what I think should be. Sue. Sue, darling. Why? It's all right, baby. I'm right here with you. Huh? I'm right beside you, darling. Oh, Ned. Oh, baby. Ned, where... Where are we? We're gonna be okay, honey. But the plane... What happened? Well, after we cracked up, two men came along, took us here to this cabin. Oh. You... You passed out for a while. That's all. Ned, what, what happened to you? Why, oh, I, I hurt my leg a little, that's all. Oh, Ned. There's a doctor coming soon. We'll both be tended to. But what about me? Wait. Well, she come too, huh? Yes. What about your brother? Oh, he's coming back. I just seen him riding down the hill. Alone? Yep. No doctor? Look. That happens after the payoff, remember? Oh, what's he talking about? Nothing, honey. Well, what does he mean, payoff? I'll, I'll explain it all to you later. Chuck! Chuck! I'm in here! Well, how'd you make out? No good. What, what happened? Wouldn't they pay? I never delivered the note. Why not? I seen this newspaper before I went there. Look. What is it? Our picture's right on the front page. What for? Knocking that guy off. The FBI found out we'd done it. Oh. 
We got to blow out of here, Chuck. Fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about them? They stay here. Ned, what's this all about? These men wanted money, $10,000. Why? So you could get out of here alive, sweetheart. And we didn't get it. You still can't leave us here like this. I ain't going to. But you just said... I said I was leaving you here. I didn't say how. Chuck, we're wasting time. I know. Wait a minute. What are you going to do? What do you think? Put away that gun. Only after I'm done with it. But Ned... Shut up. Get it over with, will you? Okay. Drop that gun, Elton. Huh? Drop it! Ah! Ooh. Now, raise your hands, both of them. Who are you? I'm from the FBI. Oh, thank heaven. How'd you get here? We knew you had a 30-mile ride. And as much as planes travel faster than horses, we circled in a 30-mile radius until we picked up your trail. All right, Pat. Let's get these people out of here. Chuck Elgin and his brother Slim were both tried and found guilty of murder on a government reservation and sentenced to execution. The manner in which these criminals were caught illustrates how little chance the criminal has competing against the forces of law and order. For in this case, the criminals used horses and your FBI employed an airplane. With every field of science at their disposal, the various agencies of law enforcement, your local police, your state troopers, and the special agents of your FBI have cut the chances for criminal success down to the barest minimum, have proved again and again that crime is always an unprofitable career. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. If you're what President Thomas I. Parkinson of the Equitable Society describes as a man with faith in his own future and the future of America, then you'll surely want to learn more about the Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. Exactly how much will this plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. Or how much protection does it give me right now? Your Equitable Representative can work that out in two minutes. Does this plan offer me desirable options? You bet it does. Your Equitable Man will be glad to give you further facts and figures on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Professional Killer. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor is played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The professional killer on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned now as contestants try for an amazing $2,000 jackpot on radio's biggest money-paying quiz show, Break the Bank. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.